Hello, can everyone hear me? We're going to get started in another minute if you want to find your seat. So, Israel, your slides are up here. There you go. All right, um, Jeff, let me know when you're ready. We are ready. We are live. Um, so we are, um, uh, this next session is called the Open SUNY Lightning Round. And um, so you all heard about SUNY Online and what's coming. But in the meantime, we still have a lot of work that we are doing to support campuses in the current uh, courses, students, and programs. And so much of that work happens here with the um, fabulous Open SUNY staff. And so um, what we wanted to do for this lightning round uh, is um, we're giving each of the functional areas about five minutes, I and mean, we're going to time you, to um, uh, give a few updates in the areas that they are all working in so that everyone can have a sense of what's happening um, and you know who to follow up with if you have questions um, or comments um, on anything they're working on. So with that, um, I'm going to start with um, Harry, who's going to talk about application services. How do you, uh, oh. Hello, everyone. Harry Cargill, Manager of Application Services. I have a couple things that I wanted to outline with my five minutes. Um, just a quick overview of the support that we provide, a little update on Ally, update on the Blackboard Learn upgrade that we're doing this year, and um, ways that we can connect. So for the support, we have a four-member team, and we support 40 sites, a combination of uh, production and development. And a quick shout out to uh, the applications team that uh, they weren't able to be here, the rest of the team, but uh, John Desati, Justin Kornheisel, and Steve Race. So they do a tremendous job, and we wouldn't be able to do the things without them. For Ally, we have 33 campuses, so more than half of SUNY is now using Ally. Uh, one thing that I wanted to point out with this is that uh, Ally is a tool that does not, is not specific for Blackboard Learn, so we have two Moodle campuses that are using Ally. And uh, overall, we've had a lot of positive feedback from campuses. Uh, the usability is really good, the support side and uh, Mike would uh, would agree with me. We've we've only gotten a few uh, faculty and student calls regarding the actual usability of Ally. So it has uh, again been a really really great tool for the upgrade this year for Blackboard Learn. We have attendance, which a lot of people have been asking for. Um, other highlights that we wanted to talk about is just uh, cloud storage integration. So that means that um, OneDrive and things of that sort, uh, storage solutions, are now available uh, within Blackboard. Assignment grading is now available with the Instructor app. And for campuses that are using Ally, uh, the WYSIWYG content, so basically anything that you're creating through the rich text editor, is now a part of the integration reports. Yeah. It, it, it is a, a separate product. Um, so for the, the campuses that we do support, we're looking at uh, starting our upgrades next week, and they will go March through August of this year. And uh, overall, how can people stay involved or get uh, questions answered or just have those discussions? We have uh, monthly LMS admin meetings that all of SUNY is, is welcome to participate in. We have Ally open discussion meetings, which is uh, just that. We talk about Ally. We have a lot of campuses that share their experiences, and it's just a, a good overall uh, discussion that we have. Uh, we have uh, quarterly meetings with Blackboard. 
uh, that we call our BBQs. And um, I'll just leave with, I'm here for the rest of the conference. So if you have any questions, please uh, let me know, track me down. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So it is impossible to do justice to all of these important initiatives in only five minutes. But I'm going to try my best. Campus partnerships, um, we work a lot with um, campuses to try to ensure quality in online programs. At the campus level, we, we do that through programs such as Institutional Readiness and the Enrollment Planning Roundtable. At the program level, we do that using the signature elements of Open SUNY Plus. Right? Um, hopefully, my guess is that many of you have engaged already in the Institutional Readiness process. We have 33 campuses that have completed three more in process and then I believe we're working to schedule another additional one or two. So that has been a big success for us. Um, tons of campuses have helped facilitate these workshops um, and we've collected over 500 best practices at this point, all related to the um, OC quality scorecard of standards. Um, related to that sort of as a follow-up is the enrollment planning roundtable. Um, we have done this where we work with campuses to try to help them understand you know, we facilitate a conversation about where does online learning fit on your campus and how are you going to resource to match that, right? Um, this is considered a follow-up to the IR process. So we've worked with 16 campuses on that and we have another four more in process. I believe we're going to Oneonta in a couple weeks, right? And we were just at Finger Lakes last week, right? So that has been going great. If you're interested in any of these, there is no cost. Um, please reach out to me and we can get it, we can get it going. Um, also, at the program level, we still have the Open SUNY Plus designation. These are programs that exemplify the best of online-enabled education in SUNY. Right now, we have 20 campuses with Open SUNY Plus programs. Um, there are 80 different programs running, the, running from you know, certificates all the way up to PhDs, right? And a huge variety of subject areas. Um, if you're interested in that, please let me know. We've been able to provide a number of benefits to those campuses, in, to those programs, including you know, um, subsidies for Ally, which you were just talking about, um, marketing analysis and consultation with Ranku, right, and Wiley, who is um, an educational consultant. So there's a lot of um, benefits to being part of this program, right? So it's being highlighted on the uh, Open SUNY website. The Open SUNY Program Navigator is where we list and advertise and generate leads for the online programs. Right now we have 586 programs as of this morning. We have generated over 40,000 unique prospects. These are people who have come to the website, raised their hand and said, I would like more information about one of your programs, right? 57,000 leads. Please, 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 I put this in here. If you do not know who is downloading the leads on your campus. If you don't know what that process is, please find out, right? Because it is really important as we generate these 57,000 leads that you on the campus, we are handing it off to you to process, right? To follow up with the potential applicant. So please, if you don't know who's doing it on your campus, let me know. Um, I guarantee you those campuses that Marion was talking about this morning are doing better than, you know, four to seven days to reach out to um, to a potential applicant. Um, finally, Willow Harris has been a big part, Lori Palmer has been a big part, Marsha Malone Ray has been a big part of maintaining the Open Student Course Navigator. I believe we have about 20,000 sections in there right now. The Willow, help me out, the summer courses are going live very soon, March 12th, very soon. So um, there's a lot of people involved in that. Any questions, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Michelle? Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Ford. I'm the program manager for student supports with Open SUNY. Um, so this piece is about what we do when we download those 57,000 students and how we help support them. Um, just as a reminder, I, I think many of you in the room have heard uh, this signature 
elements of Open SUNY plus um, student supports, but these are the original goals and they really still stand even as we see some changes to our way of thinking through how we serve our online students, both at the campus level and then maybe as we do some collaborations across campuses. And it occurs to us um, in these discussions, and I really mean us, so I'm representing the initiatives, but they actually happen on the campuses with our help. And I would like to um, also recognize my colleague at Open SUNY, Lori Palmer, who helps with our concierge group, about which I'll speak in a second. Um, these goals are really, uh, so they're student facing and they're challenging institutions to think through how we are actually ready for students as well as how we can support students to be ready for the kind of work uh, we, hope, we hope to engage them in. Um, it, I think it's about fostering a growth mindset on both sides of that equation. And I'm pretty sure it's about fostering relationships, not only among and between the campuses, but also with our students who, when we think about our online students, may or may not ever set foot on our geographic campuses, right? So that's a, it's a very specific kind of engagement and we're hoping to help our campuses um, uh, see, see some of those challenges. There are um, a number of those signature elements. I'm just gonna talk about three. The first is the concierge model. As I said, Lori Palmer is shepherding our monthly concierge group. Um, uh, we have a community of practice calls. We discuss different topics. We have um, different speakers from the campuses, sometimes outside of SUNY, which is great so we can see how other uh, systems and institutions approach this. Um, the concierge is a, supposed to be a, sort of a, a one-stop, high-touch reach across that virtual environment to help students feel appended to their campuses. The years, uh, the new sort of very exciting news is led out of our CPD with Jamie Heron, who's in the back. Um, we're developing a concierge certificate to sort of professionalize and think through what we want best practices to be across SUNY. We have a campus-based work group thinking through what that might look like and we're excited to roll some of that out to you in pilot phase over the next um, few months. The other piece of uh, how we help students is online student readiness. Many of you are familiar with the Smarter Measure vendor application. Uh, we are, we've been happy with that. We've learned a lot from helping students uh, think through what it might mean to be ready in the online environment, but we've decided that we would like to cultivate our own version of that and create our own version of that. So again, with a cross-campus collaborative work group, we are using the Qualtrics, Qualtrics platform uh, to create our own SUNY readiness tool. Uh, it's, the timeline is right on target, and again, we hope to share more information about that with you in the coming months. Those are two very exciting projects. The last is on the early alerts community of practice about which many of you have heard in which many of the campuses in this room participate. It is, it's very successful. Our vendor partner is Starfish. And uh, you know, so early alerts are about early warnings and early interventions. And all of these initiatives are, it's not only about these are where students need help, it's where, well, how can campuses actually scale responses to that and interventions to that? And if one campus can't do it, how can we do it together? Or how can system help a campus do it? Um, and the only, the last slide I have, just to give you a visual of how many campuses we have in this community of practice. So we're up to 32 um, in various stages of implementing Starfish. And we're very proud of the work the campuses have done. This is not an easy lift. It's a tool of communication for the campuses as well as trying to figure out what students need. So um, we're, we're proud of this community of practice. If you'd like any information on any of that, please feel free to email me or Lori. Um, at SUNY, and we're happy to give you more details. Thank you. Who am I going to? Hold on. No, Aaron. 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 So I'm uh, here today to just share with you this. What I think is is something really exciting. So many of you access a lot of our online resources. And they are housed in a variety of platforms and um, on different URLs. And so this initiative really tries to create one launch pad to bring all of that together. And so um, we are working on the online.suny.edu website. And oh, I talked too much this morning. I can't like it. Um, so if, I hope you can hear me. But when, if, when you have a chance, we would like for you to go to this website. And you do need to do the full 
Um, right now, because it's in draft, you need to do the main.php part of it, so you can't just go to the, the .edu, you have to do the whole thing. Um, and we would love some feedback from our community on what you think what about the navigation, what you think about what's listed there. Um, can you find the things that you need if you are trying to find more information about Open SUNY services um, and resources? So it is in draft, which means that you are going to click on some things that won't actually take you anywhere, right? Or um, you will click on things that maybe need more context. So we are developing pages as we speak. So while I go to the website to give you a quick little tour, I just want to acknowledge the work of Amelia Manders from uh, our Open SUNY team who worked tirelessly on this website. She's been awesome um, in getting it ready for us. So let's see, can this one? Yeah, there it is. So this is the, whoops, it's not displaying. It's like, which one? We'll get there. Duplicate, right? Yep, there you go. Well, it's a little funky, but anyway, um, you'll get the gist of it. So you should see some familiarity at the top with the navigator. We wanted to make sure that we replicated that and brought that in. And then as you scroll down, um, you can really, it is, but I'll explain. It's, you know, the one that's not important is the one that's cut off, so it's okay. Um, so if you come to the site, you can decide if you're a prospective student, a current student, if you are a campus, faculty, staff, or, you know. And then the, the one that you can't see is the employers and partnerships, and that, that is something that's in development. So even if you click on that, there isn't content there anyway, so you're not missing too much by not seeing that. Um, you can also scroll down and take a look at our story, and again, it's a draft, so you see we don't have the images that we want yet and that sort of thing, but you can click on our story, learn about our vision and our mission, um, and kind of get some of the background for that. So I would invite you to do that. When you click on campus faculty and staff, this is where you'll see all of our supports and services in the various tabs. So here on campus support, some of those initiatives that Dan was talking to you about, these are here and you can learn more about them. Um, faculty supports, um, if you teach online or support those who teach online, these would be here for you. Student supports, the information that Michelle was sharing. There's a, a tab for community engagement and also one for research and innovation on the other side of that screen. So again, I would encourage you to come here, have a look around. I will be here um, for the entirety of the summit, so you can reach out to me. We can sit down and have a conversation about your impressions, and you can also email me. So that's really, it's just to show it to you, get you the URL out there so that you can give us some feedback at this point. Okay? So, have this so that you all can have your presentation. Who am I going to? <coughs> all right. There we go. Kristen. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Kristen Muller. I'm the Impact Analyst for Open SUNY. Um, I only have one slide, but I like put a whole bunch of stuff on there because I, you know, whatever. Um, so my position, I, I started in 2016, and my position is to um, understand the impact of the services that Open SUNY is providing to campuses and make sure that we're meeting all the needs of our campuses and to understand the impact of online learning at, in SUNY, um, SUNY-wide. Uh, in terms of how we're doing with enrollment and retention and completion and all of those wonderful uh, metrics that we want to be able to understand. And then also to share data uh, with the community. So I've created a variety of visualizations that have been shared. So I just sort of categorized um, some items in terms of progress and challenges and opportunities uh, for this update. So in terms of progress, I think we've done a lot of work with our data in the last two years in terms of trying to clean up some of the data elements that are submitted through Cirrus and getting a better understanding of how all of our campuses are identifying online courses um, and defining online courses and students and programs. Uh, so we've, we've resolved a lot of discrepancies in terms of how things are being submitted to SUNY versus iPads or other um, reporting mechanisms. We've increased a lot of data awareness, not only through conversations with the online learning community, but with other constituent groups like the institutional research officers and the registrars and others. Uh, and that's been, I think, really effective just kind of 
making sure that others on the campus are aware of what's going on in online learning even beyond uh, the distance learning groups. Um, we added an online student intent indicator because as you've known, and I've talked about this before, we don't really have a good mechanism of knowing when new students come in and they're intending to take their degree online. We don't really know that. We don't really know that they've taken online classes until after the fact. Um, and we also know that many of you on your campuses have mechanisms for understanding that input, um, but it's not translated up to the SUNY system level. So for us to be able to know that, we needed to ask you to report that specifically. Um, so we added that indicator. Um, we created campus dashboards using Tableau, so interactive data visualizations, which we've shared with all of you. And if you don't know about those, please let me know, and I'll, I'll be happy to share that link with you. All the information that we collect through Cirrus related to online learning, we've shared back with you in those visualizations, as well as information like Dan shared a screenshot of the Renku um, online or the Open SUNY Navigator leads that we collect. There's information about those. Uh, information about you know what LMS is every campus using, um, which campuses are using Ally, things like that are also on those dashboards. So a lot of information for you to be able to um, utilize and share with others on your campus and um, really use for informed decision making about online learning. We're also in progress with making dashboards in the sysadmin BI, the business intelligence platform, which Many of you, um, you all have access to it. You may not be as familiar with it, though, than the institutional research folks on your campus. Um, but we're trying to put dashboards there, too, just again to bring that awareness to the data that's being collected and making sure we're all on the same page about how we're reporting that data. We've published two impact reports. You have one on your table today. That's our second version of the impact report. So feel free to take a look and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will point out that the impact report is from uh, 2018, which is really 2017 to 18, so some of the data uh, at this point may have changed or we have fall 2018 now that's updated. Um, so take a look at the footnotes <laughs> if, you're, if you're confused about what, why something is one way and we may have started to talk about a data point in a new way. Uh, campus satisfaction surveys and information surveys we've done and we've also started more conversations about um, expanding open SUNY research opportunities. So a lot of stuff has been happening in the area of data and trying to better understand online learning. We still have challenges. Um, we're still working with individual campuses on certain things that need to be um, reported um, a little bit more accurately or fully. The, and I'll point to the online student intent indicator because we still have only a few campuses reporting that and we really, really, really need that information to be reported and we'll continue to talk to the registrars and the institutional research folks about this, but we need you on your campuses to also know that if your campuses aren't doing that, that's a conversation that you should have. Um, I think we'll be doing another survey pretty soon um, to ask more details about how you're collecting and um, organizing information related to courses, programs, and students on your campuses to try to inform how we recommend certain things to the institutional research officers and registrars. So look out for that survey that might be coming soon to an inbox near you. Um, we have, we, you know we have some challenges with understanding the, the ROI of those leads that we're collecting and we've done some manual data collection asking your admissions and enrollment folks to report who of those leads has actually applied to your campus and we've done a lot of manual matching so that's still a challenge but something we're trying to work through. Um, and then, of course, when we try to understand how SUNY is doing, it's hard to sometimes benchmark nationally because the national data is um, not as clearly defined or a little bit inconsistent. So there are some challenges there. But we have a lot of opportunities. Um, one minute, sure. Yeah, we have a lot of opportunities. Um, we've been involved in national dialogues through working groups and publications and conference presentations and just trying to engage the community in those conversations um, to sort of steer some of that clarity um, in a direction that makes sense. Uh, we have opportunities in terms of new technology. We have a new survey platform at SUNY SysAdmin that we're hoping to use to better um, distribute surveys related to online learning. Slate is being used as a CRM at many campuses now um, through the Enrollment Management HIF initiative. That should help us to get better insight into lead to applicant data. Um, and just in general, the SUNY Online Initiative may give us better insight into some data for students who are enrolling in those programs um, so that we can, you know, um, develop data infrastructure around that and then 
gain better insights uh, around online learning in general. So those are just some things that have happened, that are happening, some challenges, some opportunities. And if you have any questions about any of that or any questions about what's in the impact report or if you need the link to the dashboards, let me know. All right. Hey everybody, uh, did anyone notice that there's like balls in the lights up there? Balloons. What are they, balloons? Oh my god, I'm just wondering, I was just noticing and I'm wondering what the party was that was here. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm Alexandra Pickett and um, uh, I'm the director of um, Open SUNY Online Teaching, and I'm going to talk about um, four main initiatives. There's, I, I chose four of them uh, just to kind of highlight those, and then um, some activities that we're um, doing in collaboration with others. And so our unit, the online teaching unit, is in charge of um, developing tools and resources and services to assist campuses and IDs and and uh, faculty um, with their online instructional design activities, with their um, faculty development activities, um, with their quality assurance activities, and to help folks not have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and so um, one of the main um, uh, initiatives is uh, OSCAR, the rubric, um, and the dashboard, and OSCAR.org. Um, which is um, our online course quality rubric that was adopted by OLC in um, 2016, I think. And so that is an ongoing um, effort. Um, we have probably 56 uh, of the SUNY campuses that are using OSCAR in some way or another, and we have um, 800 plus people uh, outside institutions and um, uh, systems and groups of folks and individuals using um, OSCAR who are not SUNY related. Um, the ongoing efforts with OSCAR are to think about what's next and to uh, think about options for the platform, think about um, options for uh, any improvements, and think about options for support of uh, this course quality um, tool. Uh, we're also working uh, with OLC um, in our um, uh, collaboration and our partnership and uh, currently have are in some discussions about translating Oscar into French for um, uh, a, a country in West Africa, Senegal, I believe it is. Um, and uh, so that's always an exciting, um, uh, you know, initiative that we're thinking through and thinking forward about what's next for that particular set of uh, tools and resources. Um, we're also, as I mentioned, um, you know, first thing this morning, we're collecting videos today uh, based on the different presences uh, associated with the community of inquiry framework. And um, the, the ultimate goal of, of this is to develop a set of resources that will um, be able to be used by instructional designers and by experienced online faculty to self-assess um, on teaching presence, social presence, cognitive presence, and learning presence so that they can then target improvements in those areas, in those presences, in their online instruction, in the facilitation of their online courses, as well as in the instructional design of their courses. I'm very excited about making some progress with that particular project today with the videos that we're capturing. And so I really want to encourage you, if you have some points of view that you would like to share on any of those presences, um, uh, even if it's you know a subsection of one of those uh, presences, I really want you to uh, seek out Jeremy and, and, um, and get yourself video recorded for, for this project in the future. It's going to be really similar to Oscar.org in nature. There will be self-assessments. There will be um, web resources that then can help both faculty and instructional designers use those tools to uh, in um, uh, continuous improvement activities, faculty development activities. Um, we're also in the process of promoting the tools and resources that we have in existence. I, I 
look out there and I know that there's people out there that I don't know. My new friend from uh, Morrisville I met today and I want to make sure, he's the first um, instructional designer at Morrisville and I want to make sure that he knows about all of the stuff that all of us collectively have done um, and have uh, so that he doesn't have to reinvent the wheel and feel like he's all by himself. Um, so uh, things like um, obviously Oscar.org and um, uh, ways to engage and connect within the community and our uh, video if you haven't gone to see our um, website our YouTube website I want to make sure that you check those out I want to uh, have a shout out to Jamie Votra our um, new um, uh, communications and media intern she's been helping us to get uh, all those videos uh, compliant and uh, she'll be here tomorrow and Friday um, we also have our interested resource and the uh, readiness, the uh, are you ready to teach online resource that we are trying to make sure that everyone knows about. And um, my new friend from Cobal Skill mentioned to me that he had downloaded and read the manual. <laughs> so I'm hoping to make sure that everyone like, um, uh, you know, that is new in the, in the community is aware of all of the resources that we have available to be used by the community. They're all openly licensed and adoptable and adaptable either as is or you can, you know, do whatever, you know, what you need to to make it work for you in your context. I also wanted to mention sort of in that same vein that we're in the process of looking at our um, at, at packaging um, and reviewing and updating our ID toolkit um, to um, make sure that it's updated and uh, that it is, um, uh, you know, uh, that we put some energy into thinking through from an instructional designer's perspective what the things are that will help them um, at any point where they are, whether they're new, whether they're experienced, whether they're in the middle somewhere, to make sure that they um, are aware of and can easily use, find and use uh, the, the tools and resources that we have. We collaborate closely with um, others in our community and with other units here uh, on numerous projects and initiatives like the um, um, Online Teaching Ambassadors Program, uh, the Effective Practices Awards, this event, um, and other things. Um, as Aaron mentioned, there's a web design project that all of us are involved in. Um, uh, I'm working with the um, student supports group to, um, with the data project with uh, Tanya Justin to look at how we might um, do some research together. Rob is working on a procurement course for the System um, Office of Procurement and on a Pathways project. Um, uh, to take that um, Math Pathways project online. And then we also have the ID CERT program uh, that we collaborate on with OLC uh, and other things. So I just wanted to mention, if to, you know, to close out that, um, you know, if you have questions about any of these things, I would invite you to come to some of our inv uh, informational webinars. I would invite you to uh, reach out to me or to Rob or to Jamie or any of us, really, um, if you have any questions about something in particular. And we are really looking forward to collaborating with you all um, in leading the online teaching aspects of SUNY Online, or whatever it ends up being called. Um, so thank you very much. So hi, I'm Mike Walker from the Open SUNY Help Desk, and this is Addie Dunham. She's one of the Help Desk analysts. And we have five minutes to talk about the Help Desk. Actually, our average call is more than that, so it's going to be kind of tough for me to keep it within that five minutes, but I'll try. Um, as you can see, we're a relatively small Help Desk. We actually support 36 out of the 64 campuses at this moment. We would love to support more. So if you actually have any questions about us, for those that we don't support, please see me um, or call me. Um, including I'm just because she's been mentioned twice and stuff Lori Palmer um, is also part of our help desk so, so she's so she's the woman tonight so um, uh, we also have two student student assistants but the vast majority of our um, people are actually professionals um, just a couple fun facts actually the vast majority are, are all, all of us have um, college degrees but almost most of us either are working on our master's degree or already have it um, including Lori who's actually finishing her master's relatively shortly through Empire State so not only do we support online students, they actually are online students. It actually helps us in that regards. Um, 
With the Blackboard migration, our primary support is LMS support. There are other things that we obviously do, um, but that's our main part of it. And actually with the migration support, we were student-centric when I first started here way back when. Um, but over the course of the last few years, actually um, in the last two or three years, campus staff and faculty are actually about 42% of our contacts now. And it's kind of stabilized a little bit, but again, depending on how SUNY Online um, works, um, just wanted to make sure that everybody is aware or who isn't aware of the help desk is that we're just not student support. We are actually faculty and, and campus staff support. That's a, a lot of what we do. Um, and then also just for our capacity, our size, we've uh, had footprints for those that are actually uh, used to utilizing us. Um, since we utilized it and started utilizing in 2008, we've had about 282,000 tickets that we've tracked so far. Um, this, this past year, um, the calendar year, we've had a little over 25,000. We've ranged anywhere from 22,000 upwards to 35,000 at the peak of the migration. Um, these are like basically our top 12 of the last year, um, which represent about 40% of our total tickets. And as you can see, there's a variety of different things that we do between just the, the LMS support and technical support, um, even just redistribution back to your campus help desk. Again, we're a supplement to your campus help desk in a lot of different ways. So, um, and that's also one reason why um, I'd actually like to reach out to those people that don't utilize us simply because of the fact that you'd be pleasantly surprised how, how, how cost effective we are to supplement your help desk. And then uh, moving forward, if you want to learn a little bit more and stuff, I'm not going to go online, but we introduced this uh, new web page for us uh, last fall. We're actually titled it online.suny.edu slash help. Um, so we're kind of like ahead of the game a little bit. Hopefully that's the, the, the way we go. Um, <laughs> And if that's the case and stuff, but please take a look at this site. A lot of the stuff that we do is actually on here, our hours, how, how we're set up, a lot of self-support information. We're not a 24-7 help desk. We are extended hours. We work seven days a week, um, but we kind of call ourselves 24-7 simply because of the fact we do have knowledge base and those types of things within this site. We actually reach out for even the campuses we don't support. We'll list their campus help desk. We'll list their online learning departments. Um, all on this site for people to utilize um, to, to kind of reach out because nothing exists actually on the SUNY.edu site, so we do that as well. Um, as I mentioned too, we have a knowledge base. This is actually an aspect of it that covers students and faculty, campus staff, technical. Actually, when it comes to the articles, most of the technical stuff is really what we get hit on, on, on this site. Um, everyone advertises it a little bit different because, again, most of the stuff is on the Blackboard aspects of it. So certain campuses hit it harder than others. Um, but again, if you're not really familiar with it, I invite you to kind of take a look at it. You can get to this site simply by going to our online.suny.edu slash help site and look it over. We actually even have a, a place where you can actually add or ask us to add more articles. Um, so I, again, welcome to do that. No one's really actually taken advantage of that, but we'd be more than welcome to, to actually entertain and actually help, help anybody out in regards to adding more articles in that regards. And then I'm gonna pass it over to Addie who we actually started a new initiative last year with um, Open uh, Education Resources. We support that, that, that team um, that are based all, actually all, all over the place. And Addie's actually been a big part of it, so I'd like to have her speak to a little bit about what we've done. Uh, so my colleagues Jamie and Nina and I volunteered last year to start assisting the OER services team. They didn't have any sort of help desk in place, so they wanted us to step in and establish not just a workflow, but also to help get them uh, focusing more on consultation, creation, a lot more of the administrative aspects, whereas we have taken on a lot of the more simple tasks. So part of our work has not only been establishing an, an evolving workflow for us, but also for them to help with uh, recording numbers and information sharing amongst the team, stuff like that. So we've created a lot of internal documentation for us and for them. We've created a lot of articles for the knowledge base, which you'll see if you take a look at that, there's a whole section for OER that we're working on. We have uh, started, as I mentioned, started taking on some of the res smaller responsibilities. So if a faculty member has a course that they want to get access to, we can facilitate that process for them. Our goal was basically to create like a one-stop shop kind of deal where the faculty members and staff don't have to go to 10 different places to get information or assistance. They come to us and then we will go to the different places to get them information, get them their course cartridges for their LMS integration. Um, open tickets with vendors for support. 
Uh, some of the other services that we assist with or direct to a uh, SOS team member include OER creation, uh, adoption, adaptation, consultation services, as well as licensing, uh, the usual LMS support, as well as uh, print requests. So if they want a PDF or an actual print copy of their OER text, we can help direct that. Uh, as you can see, they have a new website. If you aren't familiar with it, it's oer.suny.edu. It has the course catalog of ready to adopt courses. So they're courses that are hosted on the vendor that we are currently working with. And they are all set to be implemented in online courses. So all the faculty needs to do is let us know what they want and then we will put them in touch with the vendor. We do also assist with non Lumen OER texts uh, and the contact that we are promoting is our email address oer at suny.edu so we encourage faculty and campus staff to reach out directly to us for all of their questions and as everyone has mentioned previously if you want to know more about what we do or want to just discuss Blackboard or OER feel free to come and talk to me after. And one more last thing too, because we're centralized help desk from system administration, we do get asked from time to time to do help with other initiatives. One of them is the cross-register uh, application support. This really doesn't, we're not set up to actually help students per se as much as access into the application for different uh, campus staff. So if there are certain people that need access to this and um, they can contact us and we will we'll distribute accordingly in that regard. So there's a, many, there's a variety of different things that we do. Um, so again, appreciate your time and uh, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Israel Washington and um, I am a new hire for uh, ATIS. My, uh, my title is Manager of Technology, Strategy and Integration and uh, I, uh, I work directly with uh, Amelia Manders, uh, who you heard uh, earlier as our main primary programmer. Um, so one of the things that, um, and I'm gonna be real, very brief, <laughs> Um, one of the things that uh, Kim asked me to uh, first take a look at was to continue the efforts of Dan Feinberg and uh, Doug Shaw in implementing ClaritySoft, um, the uh, CRM product or customer relationship management product uh, that they wanna, we want to implement across all the organizations within ATIS. Uh, we're really looking for that product to um, just provide some more synergy between the organizations and cut down on the duplication of efforts, um, sort of break down the information silos uh, for each group having their own list of contacts. So we want to have like a single source of truth for, for contact relationships uh, within ATIS and all, uh, among the three, uh, three different organizations. So uh, that's one of the things that uh, I'm currently working on. Um, the other thing that I'll, I'll mention is uh, the Open SUNY website. It's currently ran uh, on the Ranku platform, as many of you know, and it, you know, it, it, we're using that uh, to drive uh, you know, pr prospective students uh, to uh, the Open SUNY website. I'd say some other stuff, but we'll, we'll keep moving. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, uh, Amelia Manders uh, has done is a variety of different applications that she's written. Uh, she's used a, a variety of different programming languages. Uh, the primary programming language that she uses is uh, Rails, um, but she's you know written applications of the Finance Portal, which many of you may may have used, uh, the CPD Points application, uh, the Open SUNY Course Navigator, and the OLIS Search uh, that where students can come in and search for various library books. Um, so she's written a lot of those. Uh, the different programming languages that she's used, uh, PHP, uh, JavaScript, uh, and a variety of other uh, uh, languages. Okay. Um, one of the other projects that uh, I'm also uh, working on with her in conjunction with um, um, Chris Bordelow from iTech is to uh, basically take all of our existing WordPress sites 
and uh, move them over to iTech's new data center and as well as take them from a multi-node uh, WordPress uh, situation to a single node. So we're splitting them out into their own separate uh, WordPress sites. Uh, so some of the uh, WordPress sites that uh, we are currently uh, doing that for, it, you may know, is IITG, uh, Faculty Readiness, uh, institutional uh, uh, readiness, and the Code Hub and FACT2 uh, websites. So we have a total of 25 uh, websites that are running under WordPress uh, that a variety of you all use as well. So, um, ah, oh, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Okay, I have just a couple of things that I want to mention because really um, they covered everything and I just want to say um, how uh, fabulous it is to work with this team. Not only the folks who are here, but the folks who are um, also um, uh, back in the office in Albany, um, who I hope some of them are watching online. Um, it's just really a joy to work with, with all of them and, uh, and um, uh, love that, that, that that's the team that we have. So I want to just mention a couple of things. First is that you all have brochures on your tables. And I know we have a lot of folks who um, here who are new. When everyone raised their hands, I was pleasantly surprised to see all the new folks. So those brochures um, give you, I think, a really good update of the um, and uh, overview of the services and support available from Open SUNY to help campuses with their online learning initiatives. They are structured into campus supports, faculty supports and student supports. So, um, you know, try to kind of think about who folks are on the campuses and what, how they might affiliate or how they might think of themselves and really try to design supports around, around those roles. So, um, so please uh, take them. We have some um, extras here. If you want to take some back to others on your campus, um, we want to make sure that campuses are aware of what's available to, to help you all. Um, I want to come back to the impact report that Kristen talked about um, because this is our second one um, uh, and uh, I think we're still trying to um, think about um, what it makes sense for us to convey in an impact report. Um, you know, we're trying to think about the effectiveness of our services and the impact that we're having on campuses, on faculty, on students, but would really love um, some feedback. And I know we got some, some, some feedback last year um, uh, about what you'd like to see in that report, what might help you in talking to your campuses about online learning. So um, would really appreciate if, um, again, especially folks who are new and maybe seeing that for the first time, Time. What would you hope to see in something like that and um, what should we be thinking about um, as we go forward and particularly as we think about where we might be headed with SUNY Online. Um, and then lastly, um, just want to mention that um, in, in conjunction with kind of promoting the services that we have available, we actually have a formal process whereby campuses can sign up for many of the services, um, um, especially those that come with a cost to them. So, um, and I should have put her um, contact information on here, but Sandy Cowan, who is our business manager, um, uh, is the person who um, to, uh, uh, works with all the campuses to um, get them signed up for particular services. And again, most of those services are organized around campus supports, faculty supports, and student supports. So um, I think that is, um, uh, just want to make sure, again, for new folks, that you have awareness about that. And if you have questions, let me know, and I can put you in touch with, um, with Sandy. Okay. So um, I think that's it for us. Um, the other thing I'll say is that, um, you know, these days I feel like we're kind of straddling, um, you know, all the work that we're doing to support campuses today with their um, courses, students, and programs, and also, uh, you know, helping to think about where we headed with SUNY Online. Um, and I, you know, I do think for some of us we're going to be straddling both of those worlds for a little while. Um, so please, if you have questions, let us know. And um, uh, and, and as you heard earlier today, please engage, comment, ask questions. Um, let us know what you're thinking. Uh, let us know what your campuses need because we really want to, um, uh, you know, to, to support you all in the great work that you're doing. So um, I know we are close to the end of the time. Um, so maybe we'll, if there are one or two questions, we can take them. Um, but um, also we'll be around. So any questions for any of the team? Linda.
Can we get a mic because um, up here? Can someone just just want to make sure that we that the remote folks hear the question? Thanks, Linda. When people adapt an OER, do you refer them back to the instructional designers on their campus for making uh, the proper integrations into the environment that they're working in either on campus or the LMS and to build out a full course? So a lot of what we do depends on what the campuses have communicated to us. So recently I went through and emailed all of the, uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but each campus has dedicated OER champions. So I went through and emailed all of them asking how they want us to handle incoming requests from faculty on their campuses. Probably about 40% responded. Um, in general, what we do is if we get a request, we copy those OER champions. I did reach out to the instructional designers and uh, people in charge of online teaching, Blackboard administrators to see if they wanted to be involved in those conversations. In a lot of cases, it seemed to be more just give it to the OER champions and then if necessary, they'll redirect them to the IDs on campus. So it's highly variable, but we, working with Blackboard, we kind of all want to get the instructional designers more involved in the process but it's largely up to the campuses. And the um, request that you sent out, was that the form that asked for who the contacts are? Because I think I did get that email. Yeah. So, and we were one of the ones that said, if it touches Blackboard, contact the IDs? Yes. Right. Okay, so that's good. Thanks. Yeah, and if, any, and if anything changes or there's anyone else who wants to become involved in the requests that come from your campuses, you can always reach out to us uh, just send an email to oer at suny.edu and just let us know and I'll update our inter internal documentation. We're all about evolving our practices to suit your needs. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh. Just as another note, you don't have to subscribe to our services. The OER, servi the OER support is available for literally anyone in the SUNY system. Great. Any other questions? Going once, twice. I just want to um, say one more thing since this probably might be the last time I'm up here um, for the summit. Um, so um, you all know this is the 20th anniversary of the summit and Alex is going to um, you know, um, make sure we all celebrate that appropriately later. Um, but I would like to take this opportunity to thank Alex for her organization um, and planning and um, you know, the great lineup that we have here at the summit. Um, I'm sure she's going to thank lots of other people later on, but um, I want to take the opportunity to thank her. So please, um, let's give her a warm round of applause. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, truly a labor of love, and really, you know, it's you all who make the community, so it, it's a privilege to have been here and working with you, all of you all. Um, we're having a break now, uh, so 15 minutes, and then we'll come back, and we're going to have another um, uh, great um, presentation on PIF. Uh, I have, yep, per performance improvement funding. Yep. Okay, great. Break. Can't wait. We have some snacks out there and coffee and stuff, so... Do some dump jumping jacks. <laughs> All right, thank you.